What's going on traders? Sandra O'Connell here with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It's February 9th, 2022, and this is going to be our late night edition. I was actually recording a video for a member of our community. It was a primer on options premium selling. And then from there, I had to do a Twitter space pretty much immediately after. So let's dive into today's price action. Before we do that, quick first disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice recommendations. As always, follow your own trading plan. Don't YOLO your account into any one of my trades or anyone's trades for that matter. All right, let's dive in. My voice is about to go out, but let's do this. This is going to be a quick one, but it's going to be a good one. All right, S&P 500, monster day up 1.46%. NASDAQ QQQ up 2.12%. IWM small caps, massive ripper. Dow Jones, of course, lagging up 0.88%. And these ARK Innovation stocks were up over 5%. <clears throat> so this really was like the face ripper of a lifetime for anyone that has been short the market. Volatility got smoked. And we have a, I was about to say a Fed meeting. We have an inflation print coming out tomorrow. So I must say I was pretty surprised that the market just ripped into the bell. It's almost as if someone knows what that inflation print is going to be. Market breadth finished out nice and positive. We had above 70% advancers in all of these indices. Finvis heat map, check this out. So look how bright green everything is. Whenever you get a day like this, it's always important. Take the day, be grateful, but I am certainly not expecting another green day like this tomorrow. I think this was like that bullish blast where a lot of the remaining shorts really got blasted out of their positions and really caught off guard by this gap up this morning. So yeah, a lot of these stocks looking good, pretty much green across the screen. And noteworthy, Facebook bottomed out today. I believe it bounced about 5%. All right, sectors. Let's see what we got going on. What I notice is that pretty much all of the most risk on sectors just blasted off to the upside. So we have the MSOS Cannabis ETF up 6.54%. <clears throat> what else do we have? We have the YOLO Cannabis ETF as well. ARK Innovation ETF up 5%. And this software group was up 3.2%. Blockchain names also had a really nice move. And what was down on the day? We had regional banks down on the session and we had gold miners down on the session. Our top momentum slot remains energy. This XLE ETF was up 0.83%. Style factors, look how risk on this was as well. We had growth leading the pack, high beta up 2.76%. And then we had... Uh, quality also up 1.92 percent so very nice moves and this lines up perfectly with our seasonality for february there's a really nice seasonal push into the middle of the month and then from there things get a little bit rockier once again all right let's take a look at the indices and let's check these out because it's so late we can see what the overnight futures are doing but take a look, we cleared above that 20 day moving average. My trend model is at a plus three and we had lift off today. We're above this monthly point of control of 45, 34, spot 75. And the next key technical level is the 50 day simple moving average. And another thing I find very interesting is we were down 10%, a 10% correction off the highs. Now we're only down at something like 3.4%. So we're very, we're actually very close to these prior highs. Do I think we're going to get back to the highs soon? I actually don't, but we're getting an incredible bounce. And this is something that we've been positioned for very nicely. Now, tomorrow we do have the inflation data that's going to be released at 8.30. The consensus estimate is for a 7.3% print, which is would be an acceleration from the previous number of 7%. I must say though, after this crazy level of bullishness, I think the risk rewards a little bit worse heading into tomorrow's number. If we had had, let's say like a doji candle or not as much buying, I think the risk reward would be actually a lot better. Let's take a look at the hourly chart real quick. Let's check this out. You can see in the overnight market, we're pulling back to this 20 hour moving average. I think this is a great thing because the market got very overextended in the short term for today's action. So I wouldn't mind like a gap lower tomorrow and then see where we go from there. Let's take a look very quick at the NASDAQ. And then we'll talk about my trades. I actually had a 100% win rate on my trading today. 
NASDAQ, nice move up to the 200 day moving average. And here we are in the after hours, we're pulling back 0.33%. Russell 2000. We had a nice move above this 20 day simple moving average. Now in the overnight session, we are pulling back as well. And our Dow Jones, nice move above the 50 day simple moving average. Wow, the Dow Jones actually made a higher high. That's pretty interesting. Now this one's also pulling back in the after hours. <clears throat> Let's take a look at my trades for today. And let me see, let me just pull these up. Here we go. Just gonna take a snapshot. Or actually, let me just pull this over. This right here is the pristine capital discord. This is pretty much where it all goes down. So there's a lot of information that gets populated in these channels. You know, discussions going on about different trade ideas. We have our Trady Ticks bots here, which are giving scalp and swing ideas. And this is where I post my live entries and exits. So check this out. This morning, I was long the SPY 455 February 18th calls. And I exited them pretty much right off the open for $5.21. I paid 362. So that was a nice winner for me right off the bat. And then from there, I was day trading SPY and I was shorting it. And I had a 100% win rate shorting SPY. I had a feeling most of the players that are getting long today, these are not the A players. We've seen the dark pool buyers getting aggressive in the market for weeks now. And anyone that's in now, they're kind of like FOMOing in, I would say. So I was like, you know what? Every time these guys FOMO in, there's always give back. There's always shakeouts intraday. So I'm going to play on the short side. And I ended up, look at all these, some nice day trades. So I got into these puts for 516, closed them out for 551. Jump back in. I set a limit order to get back in at 510. Limit hit. I uh, closed these out for 550. And I got in again at 505. Close those out at 523. I got back in again at 466. Close those out for 492. So I just went sicko mode in spy today. This never happens to me where it's 100% win rate. And it's pretty insane. I was trading the short side, even though the market ended up exploding higher. So yeah, every once in a while you have those days where everything just doesn't work. Every once in a while you get a day where everything just does work. KWeb. I added some May 20th, 37 spot four, two calls. I added these in size. And the reason why is because the Chinese government stepped in and bought stocks. So if they bought stocks, it's almost like if you ever heard people talk like the Fed put, this is like the CCP put. So I figured, hey, this might be a good spot to get long. The other thing, if we look at the chart for KWeb, look at this. We broke above the 50 day moving average and we're above value. Last time we were above the 50 day moving average, was in November when this next crashy leg lower began. So KWeb looking very solid, wanted to get long that one via options. And then for some stock trading, what did I do today? This was today. Okay, so I closed out uh, more of my Snapchat. For 38.89, I had paid 34.79. This was a really large position. I still have 40% of it on. And it's appreciated. So it's still a pretty decent sized position, honestly. And then SoFi, I got long this one for 1269, much smaller trade. And this one I already had some shares in SoFi, so added to that position. SoFi is reclaiming this 20 day simple moving average. So I got long right at that 20 day. I can take a very nice tight stop on this. All right, let's take a quick look at our dark index and look at what we got again today look at this i'm like so loopy just from a long day day trading always tires me out much more than swing trading i must say dark index 50 spot three another crazy day of buying so this is just nuts and now let's take a look at our puts call ratio i haven't even looked at that today let's look at it together I hope people bought puts. Hope it's not just like a call fest. What? Wait, this hasn't even updated yet. What the heck? How's this not updated? Geez, stock charts needs to get their act together. Wait, let's look at 
a trading view. Oh yeah, and before I do that, let's actually jump over to this. I'll, I'll post the puts call ratio later. So after hours movers, Twilio reported earnings just knocked it out of the park up 18.11%. Disney also reported up 6.84%, this MQ. So a lot of these growth stocks that got absolutely smoked over the past couple of weeks, now they're looking really solid. Of course, we did have a bunch that got pounded as well. But hey, who cares about that? All that matters is that some of them are going up. Let's take a look at Twilio in the after hours before we break. Yeah, this is going to be a quick one. It's going to be a good time, not a long time. Let's see, Twilio. What do we got? Do we have some selling of the pop? Yeah, look at this. So we got all the way up to 262. Still a really nice gap higher, but now we're trading at about 238 spot eight. Disney, I believe we're seeing the same. What? Disney's up at 157. So, yeah, not a bad backdrop. These companies, they were so beaten down and everyone was so bearish on the market. Now they're getting their just desserts. All right, guys. It's kind of an ominous note, but that about does it for this market recap video. Not much else to say. I think for tomorrow, heading into the inflation print, we got a binary event going on. So going to be very important to just see how that plays out, see how it manifests. We have this five day moving average right here at 45.42. It's very natural for markets to retest that five day EMA at the very least, even if it's a very strong trend. So I wouldn't be surprised if I wake up tomorrow, the market's down like a half percent, everyone's freaking out and we're down at this five day EMA. All right guys, have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow.